We're group four, and we're doing our presentation on Hola. liquid metal embrittlement. So let's go. It's very important to pay attention, y'all. All right, so liquid metal embrittlement is a phenomenon where the reduction in the elongation to the filler can occur when uh, normally uh, ductile materials are stressed and, and put into contact with the uh, liquid metals. And this is a form of environmentally assisted cracking. And here we have the three basic requirements for liquid metal embrittlement. We need a susceptible metal, a tensile stress could be external or in the form of residual, residual stress, and uh, aggressive liquid metal. Mm -hmm. So, what's corrosion without a little history? So the reason this was about was through World War II, there were um, boats on the United States American fleet that actually had problems of their engine casings breaking. So what ended up happening was they welded the cadmium screws to the iron engine casing and it ended up breaking off and causing catastrophic failures for that. So obviously when something breaks and it's you know pertinent to war, we're gonna look into it and that's what spawned liquid metal and oh, you didn't know that. And there's also the, the other image was the weld area where you're supposed to weld and that was part of the factors of uh, failure in the it also brought into study of uh, fracture mechanic uh, mechanisms for just uh, cracking and that's also what led into studies of LME later on. So some factors in impacting LME and prevention. Uh, so a main factor is the composition of the metal itself and the liquid metal. So here is a the alloys themselves, so we have, uh, it affects many alloys like aluminum, magnesium, nickel alloys, and also steel and titanium alloys. And here we can see at different temperatures, and at, especially at higher temperatures, that the embrittlement is super high in steels or alloys that are more uh, less susceptible to embrittlement at lower temperatures. And also you can see that uh, zinc is a major factor in a lot of uh, corrosion in liquid metal embrittlement. And so here are some examples here. Uh, so another factor is pressure and at the aftermath of gallium on a placed on an aluminum pressurized tank is catastrophic and very dangerous when in close quarters. And then also we have some coated steel and some coated, uh, different coated metals and uncoated metals comparing their, st uh, their stress and strain curves. And as you can see, the uncoated is a lot more uh, protective than the metal coated metals. And so these ones are zinc coated. So you can see that zinc coating is more susceptible like in the other uh, groups that allow for luminized coating that can be also be uh, susceptible to LME due to welding with uh, zinc or other aggressive metals. And then here are some images of what occurred due to these. Uh, it can be different forms of stress, whether it's cra um, uh, vocalized or uniform. Can I click these? And then back to this one, we have the high temperatures that also impact the corrosion rate of the, LM, uh, the liquid metal embrittlement. And then here is some detection for, so we have some non-invasive detective detection for, um, for the liquid metal embrittlement, and that is microscope ultrasonic testing and x-ray diffraction. Here we have a microscopic image of an aluminum alloy, this to the left is aluminum alloy expo exposed to air, and then here it is exposed to gallium, and here you can see the uniform corrosion attacks uh, due to the gallium coating uh, compared to the air exposure. And just one more note in regards to gallium with aluminum, it does actually, when it, the liquid um, gallium pervades the oxidizing layer or the uh, passivating layer of the aluminum oxide and it actually creates its own different uh, alloy. It's a, a uh, alligum or something of that nature, but it, it changes it, the, the actual strength of the metal to super ductile and brittle. And that's why you get things like that. And then here, so some industries that impact it basically impacts all industries from the aerospace industry to the energy indus industry just because uh, most uh, alloys require welding, whether in perimeters of piping or just building structures. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now onto the uh, testing methods. Um, basically, there were a bunch of papers that were written on the material-related tests. Um, specifically. 
specifically, the role of alloying additions was studied by both Tomomuru and Hong in 2019 and 2020. Uh, the movement of zinc during the LME process was al is also another big uh, topic of study. Uh, Kang and Razumkin both wrote uh, papers on those within the last five years. And lastly, uh, the role of grain boundary characteristics on liver metal and was is also another topic of study. And those will be the three that we'll be focus focusing on in this presentation. So the role of uh, alloy division. So in 2019, Tomuru basically did a hot tension testing and hot tension testing is a method for examining uh, LME susceptibility. It allows alloys to be heated to a precise temperature to determine temperature dependent properties without needing to know the interplay between the stresses and the thermal mixture. And so he, they both primarily really worked with the silicon adding them into it, but um, through the hot tension testing that they showed that the silicon suppressing the LME was due to different mechanisms. And Tumuru found that increasing silicon decreases the fraction of low ankle blur boundary. Hong in 2020 basically did a different experiment and he used the furnace instead. And he showed that, oh, well, before I talk about Hong, this is uh, Tumuru's uh, graphs and stuff. He differentiated his cracks by, cracks by type one and type two. Type one were cracks that were found under the electrode indentation and then crack two occurred outside the electrode indentation. And you can basically see that like obviously with the higher concentration of the silicon, the higher it is percent that there was basically like less cracks. Oh, before I go to that. And then for Hong, Hong did furnace and he showed that the increasing of silicon suppresses the formation of the zinc rich alpha uh, iron, which acts as a barrier to zinc penetration. And they, he had a scanning electron microscopy, SEM, and it shows basically just an overview of the LME that happens in the first square. The second square is a zinc coating between two sheets of, I forgot. And then LME cracks on the side of the joints with LME crack in a different joint. That's what the images show. But both of them basically come up to the same conclusion that like if you add silicon into the cotton of steel, it should increase the susceptibility of LME. And then for the movement of zinc during the LME process, it first was uh, basically studied by Kang in 2016. He analyzed, or maybe she, analyzed the elemental distribution of LME cracks induced um, during the hot tension test uh, to understand the zinc transport mechanisms responsible to the, that feeds the LME cracking. Uh, he observed both high and low zinc concentrations. The high zinc concentration cracks were essentially happening on the top rather than the low ones were happening underneath. And so he couldn't ultimately determine what it was. So Razumtush in 2018 conducted that same experiment again, and he ultimately showed that the zinc penetration in liquid metal and brittlement first occurs by the gray boundary diffusion, and then it was like liquid zinc fills the cracks after it opens. And then this is uh, like a schematic drawing of uh, the zinc penetration. That so they claim they were the first one to see that? Well, Kang did the experiment and then he didn't know. I like saw it in 1993 in an SEM. <coughs> He's getting boundary attack by saying forming a um, two. We saw, the, we, saw, <laughs> yeah, we saw the gray boundary attack in older versions too, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's weird. We, we came across a bunch of different review papers too on LME, and for a long time, scientists were under the impression that it wasn't a grain boundary interaction whatsoever. It was strictly, it was strictly mechanical. Yeah, there were a lot of which is very wrong. Hey. Hey. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> and lastly, we have the role of grain boundary characteristics on liquid metal brittlement. So Kang, just like he did in 2016, he, uh, he did another <laughs> experiment using hot tension tests and furnace heating, heat treating experiments to show that zinc coated uh, 22 uh, manganese, no, it's, it's the same as <laughs> No, it's manganese and boron, but that's not 
It's not subject to uh, liquid metal embrittlement at 900 uh, degrees centigrade. Uh, as previously mentioned before, this is due to the formation of a zinc-rich alpha iron layer that forms between the steel substrate and the zinc coating itself. This forms a layer that is basically impenetrable to the zinc flow, to the underlying steel. Um, however, alumine was still observed at lower heat treating temperatures, such as 600 and 700 degrees centigrade. Uh, at this temperature, uh, the zinc-rich alpha iron layer is not supported for growth, so that was not observed. And here you can see images, uh, micro images of the LME cracks. Um, I can't remember what, I can't remember which one is which one. This is called the tungsten bulb marks. Yeah. <laughs> Basically these are all um, images, macro images of the nuggets in which the location of the LME crack is highlighted. So as you can see here, um, these are supposed to be the highlighted areas of all the cracks, and then when we're close to images, see that there are tiny ones here. And then... And, um... One more side note um, before we do finish. This isn't just specific to welding. There's a lot of different things. I, the article I did read was in regards to nuclear power, how they're worried about the heat generated from it is actually making things melt on the side and causing this. I mean, it goes from, you know, like you said, airplanes to reactors Tem to welding. Temperature is a major, it's mostly and environmentally assisted cracking, tell me. Yeah. So the temperature has a big factor in the, the liquid metal and brittle and Dr. Nava, in regards to the uh, question of, you know, is Kang, there's a lot of niche uh, articles on it um, and the one I was reading was how LME was affecting Crete like it's it's not necessarily about LME but um, it does affect everything and here are references Common to be studying the LME of impacts of yeah. what the material we're using. I, I think like this, one of the biggest things for prevention was just choosing the right material. Right. There was no study. There was no study. The, 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 me, the main method was like just study your material and with yeah. X rays. And hope for the best. Like, it was just extra costs that were usually what most companies can't afford. Yeah, like don't use gallium with aluminum. Which, yeah. which you won't know which like what else were you gonna weld with yeah. usually? Like, yeah. Well, but I question when did you actually use gallium in the presence of aluminum? I, I, I did it. My brother stole my bike when I was younger, and I put gallium on my aluminum block to get it back because it locked it up to the fence. Oh, see, that's what so I did do that. Those pictures are like gallium. There was another one that was gallium on a bike. And like he had, to, he had to scratch the coating yeah. off in order, to, in order to get the metal exposed for the gallium. So the coatings usually protect from liquid metal uh, embrittlement, but once that coating is either, it could be a little scratch to a, yeah, to a big scratch. Once it's compromised, temperature. Yeah, well, that's the but I need yeah. the damage yeah, of yeah, like coating. Coatings have a certain temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Coatings ratio is really up. The coatings can melt at a certain temperature. Yeah. It just becomes, yeah. you know, exposed steel, and now you've got liquid metal that can yeah. attack it. I mean, from this presentation, I learned that I need to call my coworker because he just fixed up a cooling tower that was galvanized. He welded it. Oh, so I need to tell him about liquid metal. <laughs> yeah, that was like the picture. Like, there's a certain like you can weld these materials, and they but, do but there's a lot of it, like most materials yeah. that you need a certain hertz and a certain it's temperature of a that weld. Bead pattern. To, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like to make that weld, you know, yeah. unsusceptible to these forms of corrosion, or else you now you got expo you're either exposing the metal or you've got these beads that are now can create the liquid metal. Thank you guys for watching. Yep. Comments. Great semester. Good job, y'all. Good. Very good. So I don't have the patience to scan your report. So I'm going to put a very nice package for Alison. Oh, I don't have time for me. No. No, no, no. These need to be. They need to be smeared. They're on so much. They're on so much. They're in the cloud.
Like an hour. Recording. Bro. Uh, what do you record? I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I am going to see you in the court of the People's Court with Judge Judy. No. <laughs> As it turns out, college campuses. Just enough time to watch. And guess that. what? We'll both get three thousand k just for being there. <laughs> Did y'all know that? <laughs> Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? I somehow um, passed. I was gonna say, do you know that Wait, where do you go? show so, oh, wow. is out? <laughs> the, 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 like, not, yeah, both sides, but whatever they have to pay, the TV show pays it. So, like, yeah. some people just create fake ass oh, disagreements oh, and they, was, they get paid and then they just things. split it. There was a pair of people. I really love this. Who like, oh, would do yeah, different haircuts and yeah. styles and whatnot? They, they, show they suit each other three times. I saw. But like the TV yeah. show pays the whoever yeah. loses. Yeah. They, they can fake it. It's a fake name. It's They're fake name. The chick doesn't go. No. Who do you think's watching this? My ninety-year-old grandma. They're just there for the entertainment. They don't care if they're paying a fake person. They make they make more off that episode than they will get. Oh my god, we lost all that opportunity. I mean, how many people do we? That's what I'm saying. Like Nava, can I see you on people's calls and petty ass little thing? And then we'll go talk about it after we split it. That's what they do. It is split. I was just annoyed by the boys' calls. Who just made me uncomfortable in my life? It wasn't a soul. I am suing for emotional damages. Yes! Psychological trauma. Psychological Mental torture. Mental torture. Mr. Miles? Mr. Miles, do you have any closing statements? Fuck the school. I'm out. <laughs> No, I don't play I don't social media. Dr. Nava, do you have any closing statements for the camera and for everyone here? Yes. How would you like to say your fair final recorded goodbyes? Your final what, my friend? Your final recorded goodbyes, Dr. Nava. <laughs> Official buy is not yet. The official is not yet. Oh, He's supposed to be here for the final. Yeah, finals. Yeah, but, uh, 90, 90% of us are going to be at the finals. Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Thursday? I don't want to see anybody at finals. Oh, <laughs> a good 90% of us ain't going to be there. I'm trying to get my grade up. I'm coming.